And then look at this here. This is nice, eh? Micro Engineering Code 70. Now, I didn't buy the uh, weathered rail because I like to paint it myself. This, look what I found for $65 Canadian. Isn't that nice? Proto 2000 SW9 1200. That's going to be part of uh, my fleet. It's going to be my uh, SW900 RS number 900, I believe. So I've been waiting for it to spring on one of these, and it's an undeck too, right? Look at that. Uh, I have an earlier version of this as well, but I love these locomotives. Like my uh, Walther's uh, Jeep 9, one of my nicest running locos, they run beautiful, is a Proto 2000. So I was really fortunate to get that one uh, as an undeck. It's got dual flywheels as well. So that's going to be SRY uh, SW900 RS. I'll have to custom the handrails, but anyway. Let's move on. So in this episode, I want to talk in relation to the barge slip because I want to document the barge slip model because it is a feature model on the opening scene of this particular layout. And uh, all this stuff for some might seem boring, but I know it's interesting for some and it's obviously encapsulating to me because that's that's what makes me who I am as a modeler and before I go further like ratio is relative to composition as well okay so bear with me here because this is a topic that people might just skip but too bad because you'll never achieve uh, uh, like award-winning composition let's say like let me just use that term or that that uh, factor, you know the uh, you know the gold factor, you know the golden rule, right? That applies to uh, any art piece, you know, like uh, especially like with paintings or sculptures. I mean, in a way, model railroads are 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 a type of multimedia sculpture, and a lot of the people that do them are actually artists without even admitting it, you know. But that's another discussion, you know. That's the stigma they might have. But if you're uh, immersing yourself in this kind of thing. You're really an artist. You just won't admit it. Um, some do and they do well and they move on, but some just never come to that realization. So because that's the case, in my experience, the golden rules apply and, and, and you know, ratio and composition are kind of uh, connected, right? They're coupled together, you know. Um, they you know, they're joined like, like in a way that's sort of inseparable. And what I mean by that is, let me just give you an example, right? Like with this camera, like just let me point something out. Like notice how you see the curve right here and it goes off down and off the scene. The eye naturally goes down and then goes off, right? And like the eye flows around even this mess. <laughs> Now, if I just shift the camera just, you know, maybe a little bit to the left here. It's interesting, but not as much, right? Because you come in on the left side here, and then you sort of, there's just all this clutter. So, if you change the composition 
just a bit you see you shift it like that see what a difference eh you see the compass here and the tools and then the tape measure running down you get down to the end and then the curve takes you so the eye naturally flows through the scene and this is the fundamental that we want to put into practice in whatever scene we model whether it's a vignette within the diorama or the overall footprint as you see now and so that's a good segue into ratio concerning the barge slip here and this is just a stand-in slab for just establishing uh, the actual drawing like the napkin drawing or sketch that I'm going to work from and it's going to be based more on ratios for a couple of reasons I don't have a blueprint of this particular uh, subject and even if there was one I would look at it but I don't want one now anyway because I have enough I built from photographs most of my life since film and prior to that and I'm pretty confident that when I build in ratio that I get a, a reasonable model that's effective and nobody really cares at the end of the day besides when you have a type of footprint like this you got to squeeze you got to compress like do we really know what compression means I mean, many do, but for those of you that are wondering, like, maybe this would be good for you then. Like, you know, as you can see, this particular ramp and approach really scales out to uh, just over three feet. But I had to shrink it down because if I like to just around just over two feet because if I don't I have no room here in the foreground this all gets wrecked if I shift it down and, and keep it exactly scale I have no way to bend like to go into big bend it'll just be this like 12 inch radius and that's not going to happen if I tweak this whole platform like right just pretend this is the model if I tweak it you know five degrees like that see from this corner here that'll change the radius and everything else attached to it in terms of curve turn us down the other end as well right okay and then in turn it changes what space I have here that starts to get eaten up with the slope and the trees do I have any room for water here uh, what happens up here okay so instead of the building flat on an angular form being two and a half inches deep can only be one inch now but if i move this here one inch then i gain an inch back there etc etc So this is one of the most important phases of design is establishing composition in the sense of ratio. Like here's an example, like see this post here? Because the wrap is a little bit shorter, I want to maintain this footprint of the ramp gate, which is comprised of four posts primarily. Well, there's a fifth larger one here with a hydraulic buffer pad on the front. But this footprint here, this little footprint, little vignette within the larger, you know, scene, it's important that this ratio is, is as close as you can get to the width of this. Like this is actually the width, so this will take three tracks. So... It's important that this ratio is relative to this as well. Otherwise, it won't look right when you compress the length of it a bit. Like these posts can end up being too large. Okay, like here's a 3 8 post. Okay. 
as opposed to the half inch post. And then there's one in between that at uh, 7 16 which I might go with. I just haven't decided yet. Because I want to know the height of these as well, which I'll establish at the level of tide that's being modeled here, which is relevant to the height of this track here to the water level. This is the water, right? And then furthermore, I don't want this footprint to be right on the edge. That just, that's anathema to me. That any model would touch the edge or, or uh, get too close, even track, but I've talked about that before. Right? I'd like to at least, you know, have at least a, an inch or two. But this, this angle and what's been established further down, you know, a fair ratio of water frontier, you know, some water back here with some low tide, some other pilings, you know, here. And then furthermore, there's another big piling right over here, which is a model in itself with another hydraulic push pad on the side. There's a whole string of them that, that would run way down here off the layout. I want to have one of those standing right here. Because it's, I think they're about an inch in diameter. They're right about in here. When the barge, they push it in and out, they adjust, you know, the track when it lines up. In the same way that there are right here in front of this four-post gate. It's a hydraulic gate that lifts this ramp, regardless of the tide, up and down, right? So, if you get my drift, this will be mirrored on this side so it gets fairly wide here like that would be uh, you're already looking at 12 inches wide for that gate entryway and then you need to cheat in an inch from the edge and see where it starts to go over here then you start running out of space see so all of these grandiose ideas right have to be ratioed in you got to make cheats and you know Oh, well, maybe you should have made the let the footprint wider. No, I don't want it wider. It's already deep enough to reach in. You know what I mean? So all these things are, are factors that we need to play around with, which explains why we have paper templates, blocks of wood, you know, raw materials to move around and get the footprint established and 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 also to form the ratio of the model, right? So I kind of like the half inch post here. I'm just talking in standard measurements in the real world here. Like in the model, it's approximately three feet, which this is just over three feet. This is three eighths, which is a fair bit under th three feet. And then there's seven sixteenths. I might go with seven sixteenths. I think that'll work. Because these are really important models, like these gates and then the big post here. And then there's a couple just inside there that I'll probably cheat into the scene, like the wooden ones where they tied up booms and stuff, which will really look cool. So there's a lot of nice details to be modeled in here, but you got to get the ratio right. Otherwise, you end up um, like, can you imagine if this is in, like the whole plan is too far this way and it doesn't work? And this is common, right? No, it doesn't work. It's got to shift. You know, like you don't want to be doing that once the model's, you know, established on the surface, right? Because in this case, there's a lot of pilings and concrete blocks that I'm going to actually drill and insert and use oak dowels. And anyway, that's a, for further down. But this is the important opening kind of procedure that has to take place before I start to build this particular barge set, which will be built on a slab of 3-8 seven ply plywood all the way out at the same level as this. It's going to be a slab buried inside the model, okay? Possibly joined at the abutment, the approach abutment here, but then there's a turnout that crosses it, so that might not happen either. So, but I've always built that way. I built bridges that way too, with a slab like this running through, and then put the plate girders on the outside, built the track on top. That way you have a solid structure that stays level. So that's kind of the idea, right? 
And this particular area is very important that composition is right because when you walk in, this is a major feature scene. Like the more you look at the photo, the more you'll see how what a great subject to model this particular ramp and the and the hydraulic gates and the and these posts. You know, there's a lot going on here that's just gonna that I love to model. So the ratio, right? The ratio. Just just in closing then when you're building a building flat like a warehouse, all you need to know really is the height of the loading door. And a standard door at seven feet. And then you can take put a ruler on the photo and kind of multiply it to get heights and so on but but at the end of the day it really doesn't matter right as long as it's a fair representation of the prototype i think is more important in terms of ratio than it would be an actual blueprint model that would never fit the scene or be serviceable like in terms of an operation it just does not work if your space is limited okay so there's stage one of the uh, ramp slip design uh, the beginning, uh, forming the composition and establishing the ratio. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you have a great day.